Um, and our first session will be chaired by Professor Shen Jixiang, um, who will, yeah. This is for, yeah. Uh, Professor KK Pa, mm -hmm. Professor Su Guan Ning, uh, colleagues, uh, good morning. Uh, it's my great pleasure to uh, chair the first session. And we have uh, three speakers, uh, Professor Lai Choi Hing, uh, Professor Bala Baki, and Professor Bonatan. And uh, uh, seeing their names uh, bring back my uh, previous life in uh, NUS. Uh, I joined the NUS uh, in uh, 1991. And uh, I think in our batch, uh, we have uh, uh, Andrew Wee, Yuan Ping, and uh, uh, Alfred and a few others. Uh, before that, uh, there, there, there was a gap, and uh, there were these young faculties. Uh, the, uh, Professor Lai Chao Hing uh, Baki and uh, Kok Ming Hao, and, and I think the others are considerably more uh, senior. Uh, so, so now uh, it's very uh, happy to see all of them are healthy and very, very active still. Uh, so this makes me feel younger also, uh, okay? And, and I have some, some people look uh, up to and uh, to keep on working. And uh, so uh, seeing Professor K.K. Pua, we celebrated his uh, eight years birthday uh, last year and uh, he uh, worked tirelessly, I think, uh, seven days a week uh, for physics uh, in Singapore and for the larger uh, goals. He, he was involved in many, many uh, 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 societies and activities. Uh, so we'll hear some of the uh, uh, tributes to him and some personal accounts uh, today. Um, so the first speaker is Professor Lai Chao Hing. Uh, officially, I was given he is a pioneer of Singapore physics scene with a focus uh, in his uh, early years on weak interaction and the perturbative quantum chromodynamics. Uh, since this early days, uh, and aside. Uh, aside from his many contributions uh, in the administration of NUS, his research has evolved into new directions that involve complex systems, nonlinear dynamics, chaos, and um, even deep learning. Uh, my personal impression is uh, when I started in NUS, he was in charge of uh, computational science, which uh, spun off at the uh, department. And uh, he was then the vice dean, dean of uh, faculty of science. Uh, that was I we inter uh, I, uh, interacted with, with him most. Uh, so let's uh, hear from uh, Choi Hing and uh, uh, his talk. It uh, thanks for the exciting journey, KK. Uh, good morning, uh, my friends, colleagues, distinguished guests, uh, Professor Su Guaning and KK. Well, uh, I'm happy to be here. I was given the brief by the organize, organizer to share an account of theoretical physics in early days, my memories of KK Poa, as well as my journey in doing physics in Singapore. With the conference title of 50 Years of Physics in Singapore, I feel unqualified to do justice to the task for several reasons. One, I do not have the habit of a historian or an archivist of keeping materials for the purpose. And the hard disk drive up here has long since running out of space and quite a few things have been purged. I did my part in digging up materials as much as possible for this talk, but I know for a fact that I do not do it justice 
to many of the de developments that have taken place in Singapore. I will be largely dwelling instead on my journey in doing physics in Singapore, which is tightly intertwined with KK in the background, whether in person or in spirit. The second reason why I feel inadequate in meeting the expectation of the organizers is that I really do not have a 50-year journey to cover the topic. So I will cheat a little and extend my journey a decade before I came to Singapore. As it happens, that just about do it. Okay, a five-year decade, maybe a bit more change. Journey that has both been exciting and gratifying. Finally, I'm a theoretician. And uh, my research over the years have taken a circuitous path through many, several areas, both because of the need to meet, deal with reality and the changes in my perspective of physics research. As a result, the talk will not be as coherent as I wish. In fact, it's going to be fragmentary at times, and most importantly, it is going to be unabashedly idiosyncratic. Hopefully, this story will not get you to sleep so quickly. The 1970s, the preludes. I, will, I have briefly touched on this part in KK's book launch last year. Like I said, I knew KK, knew of KK, long before he knew of my existence. Towards the end of my high school education, I applied for admission to Nanyang University by examination, which at that time was held at various towns in Malaysia. And I wanted to do physics. So checking on the physics department at Nanta, Mind you, there was no Mr. Google at that time, so it wasn't trivial. Uh, and I got to know KK, Chichong Ki, Sim Hock Ki, and Ko Cho Jin, four very young theoretical particle physicists there. Well, the fact that I still kept this calendar after so many years in physical copies uh, sort of attests to its significance. Well, in the end, it was not to be. Uh, I got admitted but my application for an ASEAN scholarship only allowed me to attend the National Junior College in Singapore. So instead, I went to the University of Chicago when they offered me uh, full financial aid. And in 1976, in 75, fall of 75, uh, I passed my qualifying examination at Chicago and started my thesis research at Fermilab with Chris Quick. And in 76, KK and family actually spent a sabbatical year at the nearby Argon National Laboratory. We first met in person in Yochiro Nambu's office in Chicago. Well, KK's charisma, enthusiasm, and passion planted the seed of my possibly joining him at Nanyang University when I had finished my graduate study. I was thinking that if I could not be his student, maybe, I could be his apprentice, okay? Well, Fermilab, which was simply Fermin uh, National Accelerator Laboratory in the 1970s, just started its operation when I was still an undergraduate at Chicago. And it had a very strong theoretical physics department headed by the brilliant physicist um, Benjamin Lee, who unfortunately met in a car accident and died when he was in his 30s. And the team actually included Bill Bardeen. This is not the BCS Bardeen, but the son of that B. Okay. And, and Chris Quick. It was there that I learned how to carry out my research, running my Fortran programs in the middle of the night, I, uh, drinking coffee to stay awake with the rest of the graduate students, and getting rumors about experimental results. After two years of postdoctoral research at the New Spohr Institute of Copenhagen, I was appointed, through KK's efforts no less, to a faculty position at the University of Singapore and in the Department of Mathematics. The building, the math building at Bukit Timah campus is now the NUSS Guildhouse and the office that I occupied 
uh, is now the downstairs toilet. <laughs> ten years after, uh, ten days after my arrival in Singapore, the merger of Nanyang University and the University of Singapore was announced, and I went through two vice chancellors, two deans, two heads of department in just a matter of two weeks. The positive outcome was that now KK and I actually became colleagues in the same department, and there began decades of friendship in many forms and shapes. Now, doing particle physics research in Singapore was hard for me. I was so used to experimental data so readily available, sometimes as rumors. Uh, at Fermilab, for example, the office building is right next to the ring, li ring literally. Right? And in Copenhagen, uh, the German synchrotron Daisy, just a train right away, overnight right away. So, and my friend Bernard, he's not here yet, but by the time we tell you that NUS did not have access to BitNet until the later half of the 80s. <clears throat> and there was no internet, definitely. And distribution of information was by snail mail, the ordinary mail. And I would guess that half of the audience here today would not know of such thing as the aerogram that <laughs> okay and the um, um, support for uh, for conference was pretty uh, lacking at that point in time either so this then and experimental measurements and data were only available to us when they were actually published printed in the journals so but I was really an, encouraged by the tenacity of the particle physics theory group, though, uh, and their ability to identify explorations that can be carried out at an internationally competitive level. And there began my decade as an apprentice. The enthusiastic KK generally, generously shared his ideas, insights, and suggestions and follow up by his supportive spirit and encouragement. Well, I started my learning and collaboration in high energy particle physics locally in Singapore uh, from the good old weak interactions and strong interaction quantum chromodynamics to actually particle production and the Zhou Yang geometric model of particle interactions. In 1982, a piece of work in the determination of the pion form factor received some international attention, and the local press was quick to feature on that. This copy of the old newspaper, or picture of the old newspaper, was sent to me by Kwa Kim Piu, uh, the chief defense scientist of Singapore. I did not keep a copy of this. I, and uh, in it, I was actually referred to as the new kid on the block. Um, you can see what the picture of the very young KK at that point in time. Well, O Chu Hyap and Bella Waki joined the department a couple of years later, all right? And I started my second apprenticeship with O Chu Hyap on classical gauge field theories. And enjoy very much the debate and argument with Bella on the relevance and reality of string theory at that point in time. And now, now suddenly, at the physics department at NUS, we actually had seven theoretical particle physicists. Now, you've got to be impressed by that. Well, throughout the 80s, the Institute of Physics at Academia Sinica in Taipei uh, was my quote unquote, summer refuge. I would, was able to get away from teaching, do my research and learning new things for a month or two. In the later half of the decade, I was also given an associate membership at the International Center for Theoretical Physics, ICTP, in Trieste, uh, Italy. KK's hands were at work, of course, uh, with its cl close relationship with the pr late Professor Wudayo, who, the, the Academia Sinica's uh, the director, and the late Nobel laureate uh, Abdul Salam, the ICTP director. 
Well, uh, fortunately for me, a sabbatical opportunity came in 1986 and 87, and I got to spend at the Center for Theoretical Physics at MIT. Again, thanks to KK, who actually whispered strong support into the ears of Jeffrey Goldstone. It was also in 1980s that the Department of Physics got some really uh, neat toys. Through several World Bank loans, Bernard, who was that, the dean at that point in time, purchased a PDP-11 mini computer, which is only yay high and this wide, you know, uh, um, a Van de Graaff generator, and the SCAR XPS setup. And uh, these actually led to some developments in research directions. The PTP-11 and the computing mindset eventually formed the foundation uh, for the computational science program and later department. And the group nucleated around the Van de Graaff generator uh, evolved into the Center for Ion Beam uh, and Applic Center for Iron Beam and Applications and provided the momentum toward eventually the Singapore synchrotron light source today. And from the XCAR XPS setup came the tremendous move into um, surface science and functional materials. Well, there were other distractions as well during that time. KK started the World Scientific Publishing Company simply with noble, no, simple but noble mission of distributing scientific information throughout the world at an affordable price, particularly to the third world countries. He initiated my involvement in the publishing business. I learned the ropes of editing book volumes, and I designed the first few LaTeX templates for the early world scientific journals. I admire Keke's immense circles and contact, or should I say influence, and his ability to tangle with the luminous and often overwhelming figures in the scientific world, something which I unfortunately failed to pick up despite all these years of apprenticeship. Then came the 90s, and it was a turbulent decade, both to me professionally as well as to the university. I, I was aching to get into something new as far as research is concerned, having changed my perspective of the philosophy of physics research that was prevalent at the early days of particle physics, which is break matter down into its constituents, under their interaction, understand their interactions, and the rest is just stem collecting. I, um, I was beginning to appreciate the saying that the sum is bigger than the whole parts, and that, according to Phil Anderson, more is different. And if you're on the other side of the story uh, and believe more in Leo Kadanov, more is the same. Right? But before I was to move on to something else, my particle physics membership was greeted with a grand slam. In 1990, the 25th International Conference of High Energy Physics, often fondly referred to as the Rochester Conference, was being held in Singapore. Significant because this was the second time that the conference was held outside US, Europe, and Russia. Right? Tokyo preceded us, but Tokyo has always been very strong in experimental high energy physics. So it was like, psst, we got notice. Right? And this is a definitive conference of over a thousand participants, and definitive in the sense that everyone who's worth his grain of salt in high energy physics would probably make it a point to attend the conference. But honestly, I do not remember much of the scientific talks as I was pretty much totally occupied with handling the conference logistics, including photocopying the transparencies of the presenters. Again, Counting on KK's support and encouragement, I developed a network in chaos, dynamics, and complexity science. And I developed close friendships and working 
networks with some of these important people, like Giulio Cassati, often referred to as the father of quantum chaos, and the late Bambi Hu, who was in Hong Kong at that point in time. And as well as, which I did not show, uh, maybe in the next one, yep, and Feng Daxuan, in this photo, um, who was at Drexel University at that time. Well, Julio visited Singapore quite often, and interaction with Bambi eventually led to a couple of things. We actually formed the Beijing Hong Kong Singapore Joint Center for Complex Systems and Nonlinear Dynamics. We also started the Dynamics Days Asia Pacific, uh, the International Conference on Nonlinear Science, as well as what is shown here, the International Conference on Computational Physics, which continues today. With Da Xuan, on the other hand, it's different. Da Xuan didn't seem to have to sleep at night. So he and I were actually on the computer having, all, in real time, email communications discussing things. And as I was entering these chaotic dynamics, nonlinear dynamics, complexity, complex networks research, um, Zhu Hiap and I were also made, had also made an attempt to try to understand string theory with some uh, uh, fellows, um, some graduate students. We were totally frustrated, and then we changed over to quantum information science. So we actually had a study group that met weekly, usually after office hours, uh, on the study of quantum information. And this was the precursor to the development of the first research center of excellence, the Center for Quantum Technology. Uh, well, in the, 19, in the 2000s, well, uh, I became the head of the Department of Physics Department in 1998 and the Dean of Science in 2000, which also meant that my time and effort that I can actually participate in direct uh, research is, uh, were, were uh, severely limited. So I went from a participatory, uh, active participatory uh, role to something that plays, that is more uh, management, project management, and uh, uh, conflict uh, manager, so to speak. One of the things which I did, all right, as I was uh, head of department was that I championed the switch of the traditional subfield-based recruitment and research funding to one that was guided by the more contemporary, often multi-field research topics. Okay? We're no longer recruiting specifically atomic physicists or solid-state physicists, but rather someone who can, in principle, contribute towards some, one of these research areas. This was to have significant impact on the department's research directions later. We had some good catches who later went on to win the NUS Researcher of the, World, of the Year Awards, but we have also lost quite a number, not because of the lack of efforts. Recruitment those days depended on the head, department head traveling around the world interviewing the shortlisted candidates. Some of my physics colleagues will remember the days where I actually went to the airport to pick them up when they arrived in Singapore. Right. And the reason is simple. We do not have sufficient funds like we have today that would provide actual campus visits for virtually every uh, shortlisted candidate. While the interest and excitement in quantum information science were also taking, gaining intensity, prominent young scientists like Christian Kutzifer, Antia Lamas Linares, and Valerios Karani joined the department uh, around this time. Through persuasion and some arm twisting, uh, we managed to actually get Arthur Eckert to be the very first NUSS visiting professorship in 2001. And with this team, as they said, the rest is just history. From the start, uh, uh, we won the bid for the first 
RCE, the Research Center of Excellence, the Center for Quantum Technology, was officially established in November 2007 uh, with Arthur as director. And from the start and by design, CQT had research teams focusing on atomic systems, theory, and computer science. Okay, so computer algorithm was there from the very beginning. And in, in 2008, one year after the establishment, CQT became the coolest place on the equator when the first Bose-Einstein condensation experiment was done outside of the established um, laboratories. And Antia, uh, Christian, and Valerio actually went on to win the, um, what was that? The 2008 National Science Award. Finally, we entered the 2010s, and uh, I was at least setting it for myself or for my team, is that perfection is actually our goal. Excellence will only be tolerated temporarily. Right? But this is a time when we do see some of these appearance of excellence and perfection. Under Arthur's leadership, we see the growth of CQT to be an acknowledged center uh, in quantum information, science in the world arena, with collaborations across many continents. And indeed, the quantum island is really creating waves. Modesty aside, among other things, CQT probably has the best at atomic clock in the world, the most reliable single photon source, and possibly the planet's fastest source of certified random numbers. Today, uh, CQT's research top projects span basic science, advanced instruments, quantum sensing and metrology, quantum computing, uh, computation and simulation, quantum communication and security. We even went into space. Right? Uh, nano satellites the size of shoeboxes were actually sent to space to test uh, the quantum communication networks. With the growing community in Singapore, quantum community in Singapore, CQT is right in the middle of the nationwide quantum SQ initiative. While the firm believes that the value of CQT cuts across fundamental research, it is today positioning itself both in skill manpower training, advisory roles, and technological innovations. Commercial collaborations and spin-offs of quantum technologies include the joint laboratory in uh, advanced quantum key distribution with Singtel and several startups and spin-offs. Right. Well, what next? It has been an exciting journey for me in the last 50 years. And, and we can look forward to another 50 years of growth and prominence of Singapore's physics research. I wish I could mutilate and plagiarize this theme song from a Chinese movie. Uh, the original word is Xiang Tian Zai Jie Wu Bai Nian. I would be happy. It simply means. Uh, ask heaven to borrow another 50 years. I, I would be happy to have that, to be able to uh, witness this glorious future 50. Thank you. <laughs>